Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nails and Beauty Talk. I am your host, Asia the Bird. Today, I have a very special guest with me today. It is an honor to have her here on the show, the Nails and Beauty Talk podcast. She is a nail artist, nail influencer, and YouTuber. Please welcome Femi Beauty. Hello, Hi. Femi. Hello. Thank you for having me, Asia. I'm so excited. Thank you. Hi, yeah, everyone. Absolutely. Yeah, glad to have you. So I want to go ahead and get started by asking where you're originally from and tell us about your upbringing. And was there any interest that you had prior to nails? I'm from Missouri City, Texas. It's kind of like a small city right outside of Houston. Mm -hmm. And my upbringing was pretty typical. Um, it's, you know, me, my mom, my dad and my little sister were growing up. And I think we had a fairly normal childhood. We, you know, had like mm -hmm. pretty... Um, we had a lot of like um, vacations. We got to travel a bit. So I feel like we're pretty fortunate. And as far as like special interests, um, me and my sister were big into playing on the PlayStation. We liked San and we liked playing um, Grand Theft Auto. Mm -hmm. We liked playing um, Dance Dance and playing The Sims. So definitely gaming. Mm, I was in the game when I was a little like the Sims. Really? everything sims 2 and like a little bit of sims 3 i don't play it no more but sims was like my favorite game to play all the time i played sims 2 all the time because it still has a chokehold on me to this day like i'm obsessed i love the mm -hmm. sims i think there's already a, a, a sims 4 isn't it there's a sims 4 and they announced they're working on like sims 5 it's insane Ooh, yeah they just keep going yeah yeah, that's going to be very interesting. I got to check out, you know, uh, the info about that, Sims 5. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully there's some improvements. But yeah, we're like big gaming fans. My sister still plays games. I kind of fell off from it a little bit, but I still dabble in Sims here and there. Do but you yeah. play Mortal Kombat? I have not. I've heard a lot about it, though. Because mm -hmm. the new Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 1 is supposed to be coming out um, next month. Okay, so like the upgraded version Mm. Okay, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah, it's the it's the twelfth installment of Mortal Kombat, but it is called Mortal Kombat One. Okay. So, uh, Mortal Kombat One is essentially a brand new timeline in terms of the story mode. You know, pretty much going back to the beginning. Before. That's always exciting when they remix, mm -hmm. like bring it back into the like a facelift and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was like not only into Sims, but also like different racing games, like Burnout. I remember when Burnout came out. Um, <laughs> I think it was like Burnout Takeover or something like that. I forgot what it's called. Um, then of course it was Spy Hunter. I was in Spy Hunter too. That was a good game. Um, you know, Midnight Club Dub Edition. I love that game so much. And Crash Bandicoot. I go on and on, but Crash. Oh my goodness! Yes, <laughs> taking me back. Yeah, yeah. It's like the early two thousands and whatever. <laughs> You know what I mean? And it had like the, I think that era had like the best video games. Right. I really know. feel that. Like, I don't want to sound like a boomer a little bit, but I feel like we did have like really fun games. Mm. Yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. There was this game that I played. It was like, it's called, it's like a fighting game, but it was kind of like Mortal Kombat ish. It's called Bio Freaks. And, you know, it's a fighting game and, you know, you, you fight the other character and the character loses body parts and stuff like that. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I played that game, and and there's another game called Blasto. Blasto is Blasto. You know, I haven't heard of it. Yeah, yeah. It's about this yellow Johnny Bravo type of character. <laughs> you know, he's on um he's in um space, and he's trying to I guess trying to save the the planet or the the galaxy or something like that. Wow. Um, you know, stuff like that. So that's an old game and everything. Okay. Like that. Yeah, they were really fun back then. I can't get into the newer titles. I don't know why. Mm, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Now, I want to get into your school experience. So what was like your school experience? Did you go to college, you know, beauty school? Like, what's has, what has been like your school experience? So I didn't go to cosmetology school. I mm -hmm. got into nails way late in life. Um, mm -hmm. When I was right out of high school, my parents really wanted me to go for like, my dad especially wanted me to go for like a high powered career. Mm -hmm. um, like doctor or lawyer and I'm just like I, that's not me I don't want to do that yeah. mm -hmm. and I just kind of to like please him a little bit I was like I'll start going for biology so I kind of mm -hmm. decided on that and I still had like absolutely zero idea what I was mm -hmm. going to do at the end of that but right. um 
I just started, I went to our community college for a couple of years and then I transferred to UHD, mm -hmm. University of Houston downtown. And my first year there, I was so burnt out. I just had to kind of like take a break and I just never mm -hmm. went back. I'm just not a school person personally. I might go back one day, but mm -hmm. I just decided to start working. Yeah. What did you major in or wanted to major in? Biology. Oh, biology. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I still understand well, like school is not for everybody and things like that. Exactly. You know, there's some people that will do a year or two and then just drop out, you mm -hmm. know, because they want to do their own thing. So that's totally understandable. Um, so I want to get into in terms of nails, who or what exposed you to the nail industry? Oh my gosh. So my mom initially obviously like taking me to the salon with her and watching her. So she would let me get like, you know how the kids will come in and they'll let they'll paint like the little white French tips on the kids. So I used to get that all the time and I was obsessed and it just became like a beauty ritual, self-care ritual that I would do as I grew up. Like whenever I felt down, mm -hmm. I would just go to the salon and I didn't have too much of a preference growing up. But when I got a little older and I had the money to like splurge. Right. That was around the time when Rihanna came out with the stiletto nails on this magazine and everyone was like, oh my God, she has pointy nails. It was like such a big deal back then. And I remember mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to go get those. Like and that was the beginning of like getting outside of the short squares and like right. trying new things and um, exploring. Mm -hmm. And I went to this one salon, and this guy, he was this, the most amazing male nail tech I'd ever went to. And he slayed my nails. They were so sharp and pointy. I was, and they were so beautiful. The nude was like the perfect nude. And I was like, I feel something like, I feel like I love this. And that was like the beginning of the hobby for me. I would go mm -hmm. home and like paint on top of them and decorate on top of them. And that was it. That was all she wrote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, I remember, like, that's the same thing with me. Like, how I got into nails was, like, my mom going to salon to get her nails done. She would always get the pink and white every couple of weeks. <laughs> that's the same thing, you know, that happened with me. Like, you know, after you see your mom get her nails done, then you start having the interest of of nails and stuff. And Absolutely. Beauty and things like that. So when I was, like, 14, I started getting into, you know, nail art and things like that. So mm -hmm. just oh, those yeah. moments kicked it off. Cause it's also fun when you're there with your mom and you're like a kid and you watch them pick up the acrylic. It's like, Ooh, what's that? That looks cool. Mm -hmm. So I would like to just watch them. I remember around the same age, like 14 as well. I had went in one time for like a homecoming or something. And this woman, she did like these zebra print tips and I was so obsessed. It was like my first time having zebra nail art paint and she drew flowers and stripes and I was going crazy and it made me feel so pretty. I was like, oh my God, this is a right. thing. Like, I love this. Yeah, I was attracted to more so like the nail art, you know, not so much the acrylic, you know, and acrylic has this big old fumey. <laughs> I was more into like the nail art. Mm -hmm. Um, because I just like how people in the salon that would, you know, that would do people's nails of how they would just do nail art, the strokes and the color blocking and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I thought that was really, really cool. And it was something that black women have always flaunted, you know, the oh yeah, the, the color blocking, the strokes, the curved nails, the the bling nails, things like that, you know. Absolutely. So black women have really set the tone for the nail industry. Oh yeah, trailblazing. For sure. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to get into this other question. So have you ever had a time in your career where you worked on other people or what, or did you always work on your nails, your own nails? So at first it was all me. And then my sister was like, um, can you do my nails before school real quick? And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then my, my friends were like, oh my God, I need you to do mine. That was when I got really good at it. And they were like, mm -hmm. please, 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 I'm begging. And I was like, okay, okay. I really had no interest because like, I had a career at the time and I was doing pretty good at, with my job and I was happy. But mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Let me just hook my friend up real quick so we can both be cute. Right. And it just became a thing. But yeah, I've never taken clients. I've just done like friends, my aunties, my mom, my sister. Those are all the people in my YouTube videos are just, just mm -hmm. those people. Now, when inspired you to get into uh, YouTube and have like a thing where you do your own nail and beauty related content? So I was like around, I was like in my uh, early 20s, I was trying to find a hobby. 
And I remember mm -hmm. I would like watch YouTube all the time trying to find hobbies. I had got into like um, goldfish keeping at one point and I was like, oh, this is so difficult. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. I got into mm -hmm. like makeup, I got into hair and I would follow all the like channels related to those things. And then nails popped up on my feed one day and I, I remember there were like three main channels I was obsessed with. One of mm -hmm. them was called Absolute Nails. The other one was called Nails by Liz and mm -hmm. Long Hair Pretty Nails Evie, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I would just watch them all the time. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, this is so fun. Like just the experience and like, oh my gosh, when they would do glitter mixes, it was so like satisfying and beautiful right. and sparkly and ASMR. So mm -hmm. I remember one day I was about to do my set and I had this camcorder and I was like, mm -hmm. why don't you just start filming? Like, just turn it on and just see what mm -hmm. happens. And the footage came out pretty good. And I just started mm -hmm. editing it. And then I just mm -hmm. made a channel and posted it and it just took off. It just became a thing. Every two weeks I would just sit down and just film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really, really cool. So you're an ambassador for Enel Couture, which is founded by Max Estrada. So how did that opportunity come about and what makes his products to you so unique to you? Um, I've been using e since like the beginning of my nail journey. So I think mm -hmm. because of Instagram, you know, on Instagram, it's so good for networking. Mm -hmm. And I think because I would always tag e or hashtag e and I would always like link his products on my videos just organically. Um, he just noticed me, I guess. And then I think I'm like having a hard time remember how we officially met. I think it was just Instagram through the DMs. And mm -hmm. then he um, he first just started sending me PR and he never had like an ambassador thing yet. And then over time, he like started that and invited me. So it was just a gradual, natural mm -hmm. unfolding. And now, um, mm -hmm. sorry. <laughs> oh, go ahead. I'll go. I'm sorry. So as far as his products, I just liked his products the most back then and like up to today because um, I just feel like the aesthetics, especially, I like being able to display things and have it like really pink on the outside and cute. Mm -hmm. And then he had like the bubblegum monomer, which was like really a thing and it smells good. <laughs> and then in recent years with like the one, two, three goes, he has all like the shapes that I like. So it just mm -hmm. an obsession basically. Mm -hmm. And now you look at like products out in the market, there's like, you know, acetone that has like an oil scent um, to it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I've heard of that. I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah. So people get into like, you know, scents and stuff. That's like with like with uh, medicine, like with grown up medicine, it won't have a scent. But with kids medicine, it has a, <laughs> it has a flavor. Right. You know Even the I mean? vitamins are better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the kid it's vitamins funny. with a mm -hmm. strawberry or bubble gum or whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, so, it's so interesting with that. But um, a few years back, you did a collaboration with McCart. Um, I'm going to get into that as well. So tell us more about that collaboration and how important is it to collaborate with other brands and influencers? So the McCart collab was like, so surreal for me i honestly like the whole time i couldn't believe this was happening because i i've been working with them forever mm -hmm. like since the beginning when they were just like a small brand on amazon i always preferred them and i would give them kind of like preferential treatment because i just kind of like the fact that their logo was pink i would be like i'm gonna use the mccart kit like i'm gonna prefer them i'm gonna work with them for free or i'm gonna give them like free promo because i just love that like pink logo and it feels like they're trying to be cutesy and stuff and i just wanted to like support right and it eventually just unfolded my audience loved them too and it just kind of like made sense and mm -hmm. i feel like the most amazing part of it for me was especially being able to put something like tangible in the hands of my supporters and the viewers mm -hmm. and the fans of both me and mccart Right. That was the most amazing thing. Like I remember on release day, my heart was so full of joy. It could have like exploded. I was so happy and seeing people enjoy it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And as far mm -hmm. as like for um, influencers who want to do collabs, I think if you have the opportunity, definitely go for it. It's like one of those once in a lifetime opportunities. You learn so much. There's so much to learn, even just as far as like um, product development seeing like the behind the scenes, how they go through the steps of the process. Right. It's so much information, so much to learn. 
Mm. Besides Eno Couture and McCart, what are like some of like your favorite nail brands to use? I like, um, I love Model Ones right now. I really like the direction they're going in. I think they're really trying to do cutting edge things and I like their aesthetic a lot. Mm -hmm. um, for like nail decals, I love Shop Kiki. She has the cutest like original mm -hmm. and unique stickers. Um, I do love uh, the Evie Patty Gel. I bought that and reviewed that mm -hmm. and it was amazing. I like, like um, when the influencers have their own stores. I like supporting those things. I love Candy Coat. Candy Coat is really cute too with like the pink aesthetic. Young Nails is great. And mm -hmm. I love Zule's Nail Shop. I don't know if you know Zule. Mm -mm. Um, she has a, she has like an Instagram. She does nails on YouTube and she has a shop. And I just always find something in her shop that I want. And I'm just obsessed with her shop. But yeah, those are the main ones I'm always like grabbing, gravitating towards. Mm -hmm. So with being a nail influencer and YouTuber, like, was there anything that you found difficult in the journey of building your brand? Yes. Uh, the, the, like, <laughs> the experience has been overwhelmingly positive. So it mm -hmm. wasn't like a major thing. The one thing I did struggle with initially was um, putting my foot down about my prices when it came to like sponsorships and brand deals and things. Because at first you don't know your worth. And you're just happy to get PR. You're just happy to get free things. But right. over time, as you're putting so much energy and time into this uh, craft and you're creating content, it takes hours and days. You do deserve compensation and you do deserve to charge your worth. And like going from charging a little bit to charging your worth, you kind of have to like develop self-respect in the process. And that was kind of the thing for me. Um Mm -hmm. Just developing more self-respect, self-love, and standing firm, standing firm on my prices, basically. Mm -hmm. And for anyone who is new in into nails or like even just being like a nail influencer, like what are some tips you could provide in regards to, you know, someone understanding their worth and how important that is? Um, so there are websites that can help you with that, but... I would say, you know, think about how much you're spending on like the resources, like the paper towels. How long do you have your e-file running, the electricity? All of those things add up. Like how much monomer are you buying? Because they don't pay for everything. They just send you the product. So you kind of have to decide yourself. Like it depends if you are a working nail tech and you have to like stop taking clients to do this content. Think about that right. as well. It's going to be different for everyone. Mm -hmm, yeah, absolutely. Are you on the uh, Amazon program that was the, the influence program? I did join it, but I kind of got in there late in the game and I don't know exactly like a whole lot about it, but I do know there's so much like potential there and like growth potential. Um, but yeah, I did get into it. I just don't spend as much time on it as I probably should. I'm mm -hmm. more so like entrenched in YouTube right now, but Amazon is amazing. Like, I definitely recommend do that for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially with, you know, Amazon. Like, my dad told me about the Amazon uh, program and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm still checking into that. And, you know, also to the thing with Amazon that I really like is that with packaging, you know, in terms of shipping, mm -hmm. it comes like one to two days. Oh, my God. Yes. I love it. <laughs> right. I'm addicted. I'm absolutely addicted to Amazon. Yeah, you can find clothes, you can find hats, you can find everything. Yeah, everything. It sells everything. Yeah. So I want to get into um, Timu. So Timu is the up and coming brand in terms of like, it's like the mini AliExpress. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never shopped on Timu personally, mm -hmm. but what is your perspective on Timu? versus AliExpress and what has been your experience like you know getting stuff from Timu what's that like the main difference is kind of like the way that their app is I've only used it on my phone the app mm -hmm. is just kind of built different um it seems like they have more discount kind of things going on although AliExpress also does some like little like you know how you can spin the wheel and get it like a little right. discount they both do it but I agree. It is kind of like just a baby AliExpress. So it is very similar, but I do think it comes mm -hmm. in the mail a little bit quicker. And okay. I noticed that they individually wrap everything that you get. And that's mm -hmm. like 
a little nicer. It's nicer to receive everything carefully versus AliExpress. It's just like thrown in this bag and taped up really tight. So mm -hmm. I think the presentation is a lot different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, someone made a TikTok of how <laughs> people would, would pack this stuff. It was so funny. Oh my God. It was like a lot of packages to get through or? Yeah, it was like uh, like people were rapping, like uh, using, doing the packages. And they were just like, you know, it was like this dude that was doing this TikTok video of like, you know, if, if there was team, uh, you know, there was like workers and stuff and how they package it and throw it in, you know. And, <laughs> and oh my gosh. It. Yeah, I was like, oh my God, oh you know, God. but <laughs> it, it was funny. But I want to also get into your um, studio really quickly because I like the pink aesthetic. So Thank tell you. us about like your studio, like how'd you build your own nail studio? So I actually have a video, like a tutorial on how I kind of like DIY'd my desk and like the tour of my nail area. Mm -hmm. But um, my apartment is very like open concept. So I had to figure out how to do it in this little bitty space that I created for myself. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I did a decent job because I'm still using the same setup. Um, mm -hmm. My only issue is storage for PR. It is so overwhelming. It's gotten to the point where I just kind of like put everything mm -hmm. in one little corner and one little box. And um, me and my dad have decided to ship it to Nigeria in a container one day. And I'm just going to mm -hmm. send like boxes and boxes and boxes of PR because I have mm -hmm. way too much stuff. But yeah, um, mm -hmm. I think DIY is really good, especially if you don't have like the budget to go glam mm -hmm. and you want to be a little glam yeah. with it. You do. You can do so much with DIY. Mm, absolutely. Now, what are some things that you like about the nail industry and what are some things that you think could be improved within the nail industry? Um, thinking about it, I think that I love the community aspect. I think out of like mm -hmm. all the niches on the internet, the nail community is the kindest, the nicest. I remember like when I first mm -hmm. joined YouTube, I got so much overwhelming love and mm -hmm. I felt so accepted. It was like posting on Facebook to my family. I felt so loved. <laughs> Um, and I never felt like shy or afraid to, you know, talk to them or anything. They were so loving. That's one thing I love the most. And mm -hmm. I think um, as far as things we can improve on, something that we could probably improve on is maybe like the whole giving credit thing. I see that every so op often it pops up again and dies down and then pops up again. But I think it's something that a lot of people care about, especially, um, you know, smaller nail techs or smaller mm -hmm. creatives, they deserve to be credited and, mm -hmm. you know, shout them out, say their name out loud. Don't just like, you know, put it on screen and like tag them in the thing properly so they can get their credit. Mm, absolutely. Most definitely. So in regards to, I want to get into like fashion and style. So if you had to describe the Femi beauty aesthetic and style, what would it be? I think very simply, it would just be like anything sparkly pink and cute, especially <laughs> also like Hello Kitty in there. Mm -hmm. Definitely like that. <laughs> That's really, really cool. What was like some like your favorite like hair care products and like makeup products? So I think right now I like the um, Carol's Daughter stuff for mm -hmm. hair, but I'm like the last person to ask about hair because I'm still learning. I feel like I'm constantly having to like figure out what do I do now? What do I do now? I'm running into this issue. Yeah. I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with that. I don't know what to do. It's always something popping up, but I guess yeah. that's just natural hair. You just always got to learn and adjust to the hair. Um, and did you say makeup or you said beauty? Yeah. Makeup, you know, beauty products. So for beauty, I honestly, um, I just use anything. I don't have a specific brand. Um, I'm just one of those people, like, I'll look at makeup that's even in the beauty supply store and use mm -hmm. that. Like, I'm really not picky. So I do love the Fenty Beauty makeup, though. That's mm -hmm. probably, like, my favorite makeup brand. Mm -hmm. Now, what's your take in regards to the growth of technology, especially concerning AI? What's your take on that? I think AI is really exciting. Um, I think for creatives, we can get a lot of, like, um, inspiration. I remember one time I used this AI art app and I put in a picture of nails and it kind of like made it similar but different and like showed mm -hmm. me a way that I could recreate it in my own unique spin and I like mm -hmm. that aspect to it because sometimes you just burn out on Pinterest you're like okay I've seen everything I could possibly see 
-hmm. I've scrolled through Insta. I, I'm just not inspired. And it can kind of just like create something out of nothing. And I like that part about it. Mm, yeah, right. Exactly. And AI, you know, like the whole thing with AI art is has gotten really popular, more mm -hmm. so than um, NFTs. Oh, and yeah. it is like, you know, there's chat GBT, mm -hmm. there's, you know, mid journey, which is like a AI art type of platform. That's a very popular platform. Mm -hmm. You know, the concept fashion from mid journey is very, very interesting and cool. Mid journey is awesome. You should try the app called starry AI, I think is what it's called. It's so okay. good. There's like different um, themes that you can do. Yeah. And, like, try starry AI. Starry AI is amazing. Yeah, I got to check that out. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that too, like, there's so many things that that's happening. Like AI is going to get bigger. Right. But the thing is with AI, it will never replace human creativity. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, mm -hmm. AI is still going to need us to work. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like, it's cool where right. AI is going in a way, but then it's mad scary at the same time. <laughs> it is scary. And then it never gets the hands right either. You notice that the hands always look <laughs> funky. Yeah, yeah. So it's or, like, it's. They have like multiple fingers or something. <laughs> You know, it's it's really, really crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but AI is not going to do anything but get bigger. So yes, yes. Um, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. And I hope like with NFTs, I hope NFTs like, you know, fully come back too. you know. I like them too. I did yeah. like NFTs. Yeah. I was I, thinking about like getting into those and, and getting into NFTs a little bit when it was really popular. I feel like everyone was though, but mm -hmm. I hope it comes back too. Yeah, I hope so. It comes back to, to popularity and stuff like that. You know, I still like NFTs. Me you know what I mean? Especially metaverse. You know, you got sandbox and, you know, people, you know, interacting in sandbox. Stuff like that. So the virtual reality, the mm -hmm. augmented reality, you know, especially in, with metaverse fashion, that's really, really cool to see also. Absolutely. I love VR. I used to actually create 3D model assets for VR games. That was like my previous, that's what I was doing before Nails. So wow. I'm like very into it. Mm. Um, I, I would love to see a day where like Instagram will link up to Metaverse mm -hmm. and we can all go hang out in 3D. Like that would be so dope. That would be really, really cool. Right. Now, what is your perspective? What is your perspective in being confident in your beauty? Have you okay. had any instances during your lifetime where you weren't confident? You know, if so, how did you overcome that? Right. With confidence, I feel like, yes, I definitely was like going through phases throughout my life. And I feel like there's always something that comes up that's like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. this is a new insecurity coming up. But right. the way, the best way I've been able to get over those things is like always have someone on your feed or that you can look at that looks like you. And that mm -hmm. helps me so much. Like I will look at women who look like me and I can admire their beauty and it helps me like admire my own beauty as well in a way. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking at people who look nothing like you and wondering why don't I look like that? That's not right. necessary because everyone's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. How would you define beauty? I think beauty is so subjective and it's like this thing that you can't uh, put into words really easily. Right. But for me, mm -hmm. when I find something beautiful, it, it like opens up my heart and I feel like mm -hmm. these feelings of excitement. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I think excitement and it's just a feeling it's hard to explain. <laughs> yeah, I think beauty is in the imperfections. I think that beauty, you know, is unique. How you said it's subjective and it's unique to everyone. And yeah. I think the main inspiration for beauty is nature. I think Mother Nature, you know, sets the foundation mm -hmm. for defining beauty and its imperfections and how beautiful the imperfections are. So right. I think, you know, I think beauty to me is all about, you know, embracing the imperfections, you know, and that's what makes, you know, things beautiful. Because when you're confident and you like it, other people like it too. When you mm -hmm. like it, it's like they kind of just reflect it back to you. Yeah, right. Exactly. And that's like with art too. You know, if you have mm -hmm. a unique style of, of creating things, people will gravitate towards you, towards you more and be engaged with you. And, okay. and that's the thing. So, you know, and I know it's like people say, you know, give people what they want. I mean, of course, that's true. Mm -hmm. But I think also, too, if you put out your own aesthetic out there, people will be attracted to it and it's going to be a demand for it as well. Oh, yeah. Kind of like, you know, trailblazing and being a trend creator instead of a right. trend follower. Yeah, right. Exactly. Most definitely. So for up and coming nail artists, you know, who want to get into YouTube, mm -hmm. what would be some words of advice of how to get started? 
I always tell people who are interested in YouTube, don't wait, start like today. Like use your phone. The phone is awesome. Like iPhones are so good now. The camera's amazing. You can just turn it sideways and just start filming. Whatever you're mm -hmm. into, whatever you want your channel to be about, don't wait until you have the perfect camera and the perfect lighting and the perfect setup because you'll just be waiting and putting it off for so long. Just start mm -hmm. now because a lot of like really famous YouTubers started on their phones. Right. So people just have to start and there's nothing to be shy for. People are like really nice on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Now, do you do like live streams, you know, in terms of doing nails? I used to do lives here and there. Like I've done maybe like two or three lives, mm -hmm. but I actually plan on getting into doing lives um, around next year's summer. I have like big plans in mind for that. Mm -hmm. I want to have like the correct setup so I can also have face cam and nails at the same time. So I'm going to have mm -hmm. to rewire things in here and mm -hmm. get a couple different cameras and stuff. But I definitely plan on going live again because it's really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really cool. If you had a top five list of your favorite nail artists, who would they be and why? Um, I love. OK, this is difficult. <laughs> I like I look up to Evie a lot, especially just as a businesswoman and a YouTuber, and especially because she was one of the first ones that I watched, I definitely mm -hmm. look up to Evie. Um, mm -hmm. On the same notes, I look up to Emily Susanna's channel too. Love her mm -hmm. channel. I love how she's also like a businesswoman nail YouTuber. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I love Max. I love his nail art. Mm -hmm. I love his aesthetic and just like as a person. Um, I want to shout out my friend Nails by Mermaiden and my other friend Baby Girl Nails, who are fellow email ambassadors. Those are my besties. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess those are the people I'm most like looking at and interacting mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, how have you been able to balance being a nail influencer and a YouTuber with mental health? Oh, that's a good question. So. I do experience burn burnout. I actually went through that like over the last two years, I've been recovering from a burnout. It happened mm -hmm. like right after my kit was released. Mm -hmm. I felt the need to slow down. And there's always a voice that will come out and is like, oh, you need to post more. You need to right. be consistent. If you're not, you're going to fall off. And I was just at the point where I was like, I don't care. I really don't because um, I can always bounce back. I need to work on me and focus on me because right. you can't pour from an empty cup. So I mm -hmm. would just tell people like, if you feel the need to take a step back, just trust that it's going to work out and prioritize your own health first. Yeah, absolutely. Most definitely. Now, what are some things that you do in terms of like self-care and things like that? Self-care. I like to, um, I like to obviously do my hair like a wash day do my toes, do my feet, scrub my feet. I kind of like figured out how to do my own pedicures in here. Um, mm -hmm. Even just dressing up and putting on your makeup and just glamming yourself feels so right. good. Even if you don't want to go anywhere, I love getting glam just for no reason. I used to do <laughs> lashes. <laughs> and um, just everything that makes you feel good is what you should right. do for self-care. Last but not least, where can people find you on social media? How can people support you and your work? So I'm on YouTube at youtube.com slash Femi Beauty. I'm on Instagram at Femi.Beauty. And on my YouTube about page, I have a link there for my website, for my Patreon. So if you're interested in checking those two things out, you can check them out there. Yeah, that's cool. Like, How, how does Patreon work? Patreon is kind of like a sub it's a subscription based program. So you will mm -hmm. kind of like choose which tier you want to do for supporting. There'll be like three different options. Mm -hmm. and, um, on my Patreon, I have a lot of behind the scenes and like content that I felt like wasn't fit for YouTube is over there. And you can always unsubscribe at any time. And that's what Patreon is pretty good for just like crowdfunding. Okay. Yeah, that's very, very interesting. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Femi, for jumping onto the thank show. You, your, work you. Absolutely, your work is absolutely adorable. I love oh, like the Hawaii cute aesthetic that you've consistently had. Your nail art is really, really adorable. Um, I really enjoyed our conversation. It was such a pleasure to have you. Just thank you so much. Thank you, Asia. I loved it. And good luck with everything on your show. You're doing great. Yes, thank <laughs> you so much. Well, take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Hello, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to click the bell for notifications. Also, follow me on my social media platforms and visit my website, asiaticbird.com, and be on the lookout for more interviews to come very soon. Take care, stay healthy, and stay beautiful. Bye-bye.